Hey guys, it's Tax finally delivering the long awaited general solo damage farming guide. So, I might plan on doing a duo plus version of this guide if this gets enough attention and support from you guys. But doing solo because most people don't have friends to play with 90% of the time on this game. So, moving on, I'll be showing you guys the icons I'll be using for damage amp and slow percentage being applied on an enemy so on your left is the damage amp and on the right side is the slow so to actually get to the point of the video let's start talking about interactions for the general debuffs or damage farming so for our first interaction of course is between despair and vulnerable so the main premise of this interaction is just overriding whatever has a higher value between damage amp and slow so for the spare being 30 percent and 50 and vulnerable just being a 50 percent flat damage amp with a 20% low boost. So using our dummy here being Usopp, if he's applied both with the spare and vulnerable, you will be getting a 50-50 split between both. So as I said, for the spare, you're getting a 30% damage amp and a 50% slow. While you have vulnerable applied at the same time, the damage amp from the spare will be overridden by vulnerable. And you guys may think, where's the 20% boost slow from vulnerable? So for that, a slow boost only applies to the actual slow debuff, which is weird because they didn't really specify it in the wording just this boost slow by 20% but it's the actual slow debuff that boost not the spare slow so those two are separate things the spare slow and slow itself are two separate debuffs but moving on to our next interaction being the spare and drowning so for this interaction you'll be getting a 50 70 split so for the reason is that drowning itself as a debuff applies the actual slow debuff but it buffs any type of slow in the game be it either the spare or the normal slow but since you have a higher value slow than the actual slow debuff being the spare slow you'll be retaining the 50 percent from the spare slow part of the passive and while on the topic for drowning it also buffs the damage dealt for enemies by an additional 20 percent so that's the reason why you're getting a 50 70 split doing that now for the iconic trio for late game interactions for the three debuffs being the spare vulnerable and drowning you could also substitute a drowning unit with a sleep unit which i'll also explain later on so for this interaction you'll be getting a 70 70 the split as i explained before about the despair and vulnerable is just overriding values but adding on to the adding on to that for the drowning part where both, both the damage amp and the slow by 20 percent you'll be getting a perfect split of 70 70. so for sleep what you'll be getting from sleep will just be a 70 50 split since sleep only amplifies damage while stunning the enemy now if you combine all four of these interactions despair vulnerable drowning and sleep you'll be getting a 90 70 split since all damage amps do stack on top of each other, including drowning and sleep on top of vulnerable, so you'll be getting a 90% damage amplification onto an enemy, while the despair will just be retaining its slow while being amped up by drowning's 20% increase. So one last thing I want to talk about is how slow amplifiers work. Mainly the main passes that we have that amp slow is drowning, vulnerable, cosmic, and gravity, which was recently introduced due to Pucci. So these four passes, of course, three of them only buff the normal slow, being vulnerable, gravity, and cosmic. But after testing for a bit, of course, some people could prove me wrong about my testing, but I concluded after an hour of testing it, you can only have one slow amp being applied onto an enemy of course all the debuffs will show on an enemy but only one slow amplification will be applied onto the actual slow debuff that's from what i've concluded from testing of course you can prove me wrong in the comments but that's what i've concluded from testing so that's it for the main interactions for the general debuffs being mainly the spare vulnerable grounding and sleep so moving on to the next topic being teams so for your first team that you'll be using mainly when you start off the game and after you go to your settings and enter all the codes going to the banner you'll be presented with the beginner banner you won't be seeing the banners on the left side or the multiple banners on the left side the only banner that you'll be seeing is the beginner banner which provides you with all these characters so to start off the team that you will be given off rip to damage farm farm orbs for characters that you're going to later craft or evolve will be presented on your screen so this team provides a zero 0% damage amp but a 50% slow off rip which in my opinion is really good for stalling 
to get more score and more waves on your damage or orb farming runs. So I'll be showing you guys the most optimal placements in my opinion for these characters. Ignore the first two slots I have being Death the Kid and Naruto. They're just there just to carry me throughout the entire stage when I'm doing the placements for these characters. So to summarize one last thing, your first two slots are usually your leader skill character, which is usually the carry for the damage farming. And the second slot is the character that you want to get damage on. So I'll go in more detail about this later, about optimal placements for different types of AoEs for a character that you're doing damage on. But moving on to the optimal placements. So here for the optimal placements for these characters, starting off with Railgun Girl. So you can place, these are the two main placements in my opinion that are the most important, which is the first one being right here near this hill, aligning herself with this railing. So this placement is perfect for her knockback, which you get on upgrade seven, perfect coverage on that AOE, as you can see. And the next one, which is just here to apply the slow on the ground as early as possible, which is this railgun girl set on last directly right behind the spawn of the enemies. The next character, in my opinion, that is very important, which is Fujitoro, which is directly on this hill as close as he possibly can to the spawn. He's just there just to apply the slow to the flying enemies whenever they come by. Next up is the next Fujitoro placement which is right here at the corner of this hill so you want to set him to nearest upgrade seven or above to maximize his circle aoe and cosmic application well this fujitoro is also on upgrade seven on nearest as well and also maximize the cosmic application to have a consistent 50 percent slow so i'll set them to nearest just so for the visual watchers and the last character which is gray witch she's only mainly there to be used to stall waves for her rewind which is 500 seconds cooldown or 300 second cooldown i don't remember but you mainly just use it when they're either close to the end or you hit max enemies so to the point where you can no longer skip and there's too many enemies on the map so yeah that's mainly all the placements if you want to place your extra railgun girls you can set them to her paralysis upgrade on nearest maximize her circle aoe it stops at upgrade six if you go to upgrade seven it'll make her go to her knockback upgrade but that's mainly it for the off rip team that you can get so now moving on to the replacements for each of these characters so with the replacements starting off with one of the most important characters being railgun girl so for her her replacement that you can use that in my opinion is better for slow coverage is eu which has full aoe coverage on a slow at max but in my opinion railgun girl provides knockback and paralysis in her hit which in my opinion has more value than full aoe slow next up is Ray Witch. So for her, you're going to progressively layer down in the game, going to obtain both Power Reaper and Idol, hopefully. So for Grey Witch, you would replace her for Power Reaper since he provides a 40 second rewind compared to her 30 second rewind. And for Denji, of course, you're going to replace him for Idol or I Hoshino, which provides money and a buff to all your allies. For Gravity Admiral or Fujitoro, there's really no replacement for him since he's the only slow amp and air slow that you have currently until you go down later in the game. So moving on. So on the Noob to Pro account, so the team that i am be showing is the early mid game team, which contains Kojaku Demon, Noel, Dark Flame Lover, and Idol as the core foundation of this team so pretty much when you progress through the game these are going to be your main targets for your next damage farming team of course you could go for immediately straight to end game if you want but that would just take a while so in my opinion this is the best path in my opinion after you start playing the game this is your main goal but moving on to the optimal placements for this team so starting off with the optimal placements for this team we'll start off with the noels the drowning applicator so starting off with the first noel you want to place her on this mid middle hill and you want to try and maximize her line OE where her the right side of the line is barely hitting the lane while her left is hitting as much of the lane as possible to her left to maximize her line AOE. The second Noel you want to set to upgrade 10 or higher and set it onto nearest. I have it for stop to represent the coverage that it has when put on nearest. So on nearest she'll be hitting the center of her circle will always be hitting right here where I'm standing which is covering this lane and here this part of the lane. 
The next Noel that you want to also place down is this Noel right here at the corner of this hill. So we're also onto Nearest, and this is just a representation on the coverage on her circle. So on Nearest, she'll be hitting right here. So she'll be hitting around here and over here when she's attacking. So if you compare both of these together where I'm standing, they are constantly hitting each other. They're colliding. The circles are colliding, meaning that you'll be having consistent application throughout the lane. And then this Noel right here, who is selling first, also on upgrade 10 or higher, is just there just to deal with any leaks that go past these Noels. And that's mainly it for the Noels. Now on to the Kenjaku Demon. So for me, since I have Deadeye, I only need a place two, but for maximum coverage and for optimal damage, do just only place two Kenjaku Demons. Just try and maximize their full AoE aspects to reach both the beginning and end of the map. So for my first Kenjaku Demon, I place him near this hill and put him to upgrade nine, which is right before his new passive Demon Flame. And then the last one, which is right alongside this hill to the left of it, or right, depending where you're looking. But I place this Kenjaku Demon on upgrade nine. Don't have the set priority since he is constantly full AoE. And then my last Kenjaku Demon, which is on Demon Flame just for more damage, just to kill enemies. And then lastly, your Dark Flame Lovers. Same principle here. You only need a place two. You could place more just to get more damage. But for Dark Flame Lover, I just place him on top of Kenjaku Demon and he perfectly covers the whole map. So that's mainly it for the optimal placements. But there's one more thing I want to know. It is about optimal AoE spacing, depending on what character you're damage farming. So for me, I'm damage farming Esper Rival. I know I'm doing the wrong element. I should be doing dark, but I'm just doing red, just for example. But as you can see how much space my Esper Rival has with his AoE and how much coverage he has, he's practically covering like it's a full AoE. So that's what you want to treat a circle as, as like a movable full AoE when you're damage farming. So comparing him to like when you put on the last, look at how much room that you're losing out or how much coverage you're losing out when you set your or set a character that has a decent sized circle AoE or circle AoE in general. You're losing half of the circle, half cover, half of the coverage that they could be gaining. But if you optimally place your circle character, look at this, practically a full AoE. So advice, depending on the AoE, try to maximize the AoE no matter what. So for a line AoE, as for example, for Noel, I'm trying to maximize it to cover as many corners or lanes as possible or as much of the lane as possible. Same with a circle AoE, just trying to cover it as a full AoE, trying to maximize the range or the size of the circle compared to when I put on the last wasting half of it. Let me skip right here and see wasting half of the circle AoE, losing out half of the coverage I could be having, meaning more enemies to be in the AoE one grouped up. And then for full AoEs, just try to maximize your range to barely hit the beginning and as much to the end, so more enemies to be hit. And then for cones, same principle as lying, just try to maximize the cone AoE as much as possible. And that's mainly it for the AoE diagnosis or review. I'm pretty sure I'm missing an AoE, but eh, who cares? Just try to maximize line AoEs and circle AoEs for maximum coverage. Same thing with cones. Full AoEs, you just want to make sure you're barely hitting the beginning and hitting as much uh, or covering as much of the map as possible for maximum coverage. And yeah, that's mainly it. So moving on to the, oh my god, if I can zoom, late game teams. So I forgot to add the alternatives or replacements for the last team, but here's the picture of the team itself and the information about it. So moving on to the late game section for this, I won't be going over a covering placements or the teams entirely i'll just be showing a picture of them but mainly in the late game section i'll just be going over general knowledge and general basics that you need to know when you are damage farming so starting off with the very first thing so the very first thing that you need to know is about the basic stuns being charm stun sleep and etc paralysis and all that so how they work or how these stuns work is that only one of them can be applied at a time so for example if i apply sleep to enemy right here and i try to apply charm charm will not be applied at all since there's already a stun on it so the only thing that can really all like bypass this like the only stun that really does bypass this rule is the time stop debuff which shanks dio and many other characters have including kurumi if you use zion which gives you uh time stop passes so for characters like dio and shanks who have the ability to infinitely cycle so how to infinitely cycle or the time to when to cycle to another their shanks is when this timer hits the 30 second mark so for how time stop works is that when an enemy has time stop you can't apply another instance of time stop until the actual debuff disappears so right here the time stop debuff disappears and i can apply another instance of it but if i try to apply time stop 
when they start moving, it doesn't get applied. So the time when to actually apply the actual debuff is when the manual here hits 30 seconds. So, so same for Dio. When it hits 30 seconds, you switch to another Shanks. But if you want to take your time, you can do it at 31. But yeah, that's mainly it for the time stop or stun section. So moving on to the next section section about damage farming is the rewind section. So of course, uh, there's multiple rewinders being Jorano, Shinji, Aizen, and then some map ma wide or game wide rewinds such as angelic dragon power reaper and gray witch so how rewinds work is that it's a permanent debuff that can't disappear when used so starting off with Jorno, if i use his manual ability it'll rewind this is a uh, aoe rewinds so it's similar to shinji's aizen's and all that and they all share one cooldown which is reverse so that's the reverse for range rewind so within range they can rewind so if i try to use it again it doesn't happen because he still has a debuff but if I were to use a map wide one, it would work since it is a map wide and it's a separate uh, separate type of rewind. It will go over it. Another character that can bypass this or a character that can bypass both of these rules is Karumi, which she has a rewind, good bet, that rewinds unconditionally no matter what map wide. So even if you already use another rewind, such as another map wide rewind, such as Angelic, I could use Karumi since it is its own separate rewind and it stacks. So in total, you can have three separate type of rewinds being a range one, map wide, and then Karumi's being the special case, as you can see. So rewind can only be applied to enemies once and until they introduce a character that resets the debuff timer on enemies, then you can reuse them but until they introduce a character like that. So yeah, that's mainly it for the debuff interactions for mainly stuns and rewinds. So right before I end this late game session or late game segment of this guide, so I just want to talk about optimal placements for butterfly guards since people are going probably going to ask about that so starting off with the first butterfly guard you want to place him as close to the spawn as possible setting him to nearest so of course you won't have full coverage of spawn since you only have three placements of him so for this placement he'll be hitting right here like the center of a circle will be hitting right here which will be practically covering here and all the way over here while the second butterfly guard who's also on nearest will be intersecting with this butterfly circle covering at this edge of this lane all the way over here and the last butterfly guard which is placed at the back for any for maximum coverage of the lane you will also put him on nearest and it will be covering practically where this butterfly guard left off off all the way close to spawn when he's hitting when the center of a circle is hanging right here so yeah that's mainly it for the optimal placements and the guide i don't know if there's any more to talk about or anything that i forgot but if you still have questions come join the discord server i'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities but that's mainly it peace <laughs>